Mike Gould here, mayor of Houndstown, USA, and Houndstown University, home to the happiest and smartest dog. In here, in this crate or den, I have my four-month-old boarding school uh, client. His name is Blue. He's a little four-month-old puppy, and we're putting structure in his life. So some of his problems was pulling, uh, pulling on a leash, which is indicative of the status of the dog, right? If a dog is pulling, Unless he's being uh, instructed to do it, then he, psychologically he's the leader of a pack. So we're going to teach him to heal by walking on our left side, going to a designated den to consume his food, which to us is treats, to him it's just a dead animal. Uh, many of the theories and, and the, the training techniques that I use has been finally validated by science. So these are things that I've known anecdotally for 30, 35 years. Now, by the work of Dr. Temple Grandin, uh, who is the guru on animal behavior, and she has decoded it because of her autistic brain, which sees in pictures, she relates and identifies with the dog brain as I do. So uh, we're going to keep this very simple. So to her, she's like I said, she a light bulb literally went off when I read her book, Animals in Translation. So we talk about, she talks about distractions and how the animal brain sees the world. A dog especially s smells the world more than it sees it and hears it. So they put pictures together using their eyes, nose, and hearing. And when the picture's not right, so the picture of a man it, be, it could be a family member who's fine, but when he comes in with a scarf on, it might be a distractor or a dog that he may even a a fear that. So my little friend Blue is in his crate. I'm going to release him by just getting low, changing how I look to the dog. One of the things we do is get down low and see the world from where the dog sees it. When we go outside later and the dog doesn't heal correctly, it may be because he's walking through carbon monoxide. It's cold out now, it's the winter, and gas accumulates down on the ground. So, if the, so we have to understand fear from disobedience. So we teach obedience, which is the subordination to leadership. Subordination to leadership. We don't use treats that's a trained dog gets a treat. When the food gets in between, the dog is simply just working for the food. The only time, only time, this dog or any other dog is going to get any morsel of food is when he goes to the crate voluntarily. So we're only in the third or fourth day. So I'm going to get low. The leash and collar is always on. Let's see what happens. In my mind, Blue is going to come out and say hello to me. <laughs> Good dog. And then I love. So here's the positive reinforcement. Positive reinforcement. I'm not yelling, screaming, dogs don't talk. So for me to yell at the dog is ridiculous. The only time the dog's going to get a treat. Watch how this works. Blue, go place. Place. She didn't know. She needs help. Place. Good doggy. Good. Now, just think of this. I didn't lure her in with a treat. Luring the dog in with a treat is completely opposite of making her go in as mother would. We need a mechanism. The leash and collar stays on for the next, till the behaviors are set in the dog's mind. As consist, when we're consistent, we got to be down here. So just me lowering, just me lowering my center of gravity, her tail started wagging. I don't know if you can hear this. This is simple. Dogs see in black and white. They, they, they see movement. They identify movement, sounds. And a dog, more than I think than cattle, sees their world a lot more with their nose. So I'm going to release her from her den. She can't come out voluntarily. Think of this. This isn't an oppressive thing. This is a loving thing. If the dog comes out and the, the, the wolf is out here, or a predator's out here, he'll, the puppy will be eaten. So I just get low? OK. OK is the release command. The praise for all other behavior is physical love, physical touch. No treats for sitting, staying. So we're going to cut. We're going to go outside and teach her her place in the pack. OK, following through with our little friend here. Notice I have a loose leash. I have a nylon collar. I don't use pinch collars. I don't use electric collars. But Temple Grandin, Dr. Temple Grandin, talks about distractors. Well, that's a distractor in there. It's another dog barking. But just the sound of metal to metal. Watch what happens to my little puppy. Look at his ears. Door, uh, phone's ringing. So he got up. Sit. Sit. The distractor of a human being. Uh, blue, sit. I asked to sit. See, I get the behavior. 
no food reward. There's huge distractions. There's somebody here at the door. I'm going to step out my right foot. Notice my energy. This is a four-month-old dog that has to be explained what dogs are. Now she's distra he's distracted by odor. I have to correct him a little. Odor is hunting. <laughs> Good doggy. So I praise, not physically, because physical praise in this moment will overexcite him. So I open my door. These are all unnatural. Just this clanking metal is a distractor. Odor of a dog eight is, is on the 18 inches off the ground. He gets up. I ask him to sit. Blue, sit. I correct a little. Blue, sit. Dog, heel, we go down Houndstown Boulevard. The dog is on our left side. The dog's on our left. Good doggy blue. I praise him. I turn. He's on my left. That's his place in the pack. Good doggy blue. Good doggy blue. Good. I ask him to sit. Good. So the pack animal's responsibility is to avoid distraction. Sit and pay attention to the leader. We don't really talk. This is the fourth day. When you see this dog in 10 days from now, there's not gonna be any conversation. I'm stepping out with my left, going back down Houndstown Boulevard. Why? Because I think the wolf is over here. Heel. And the dog's gotta go fast. <laughs> when I stop, he needs to sit. If I decide the wolf is over here, I gotta go this way. Good doggy. Distractions. Noise, metal, can't happen. Okay, so some of the other things we talk about that are so simple for us, but dogs sometimes can't figure it out. And T Dr. Temple Grandin talks about this ex extensively. Sit. In her book, Animals in Translation, is shadows and contrast. I'm going to walk with my left. Good dog. This dog has no problems going and seeing his shadow. But I've had dogs that wouldn't walk into their shadows. So we got to teach the dog what a shadow is. Right now, it's not a problem. So distractors, noise is a distractor to a dog. Metal to metal. Heel. That odor of the stick was a distractor. I'm going to ask him to sit. Sit. Blue. You see a little fear. You have to distinguish fear from disobedience. It's hugely different. It looks the same, but it's different. So what one thing is disobedience, trying to pick up a stick with odor on it, Fear is the sound of this noise or this metal on this flag. We're going to give them free time. Okay, so here we are. This is another important frame of mind for a dog. They need to play, especially young pups. Good doggy. So this is important, but the leader has to control it. We have to designate the spot and control the play. So obviously puppies need to play more than an adult dog. Where is this little run? Yeah, 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 yeah. We keep the leash and collar on because in our unnatural world, we have to have a mechanism to correct his bad behavior. His bad behavior would be trying to jump over a fence. So he drags, he becomes very accustomed to this, and we're doing great. He can pee and poop, and then his needs are met. Okay, continuing uh, with some of the concepts of Dr. Temple Grandin, who wrote Animals in Translation. Again, this is something we've been doing day in and day out, but I'm so relieved that uh, you know, a light bulb went off when I read this book and then it just it makes things much easier for me to figure out. So here I have my little puppy and what do I have here? What is this to a dog? To a dog, to a human it's a ball, to a dog, a prey animal, it's a rabbit. It can't chase it. What is this? To a human it's a little squeaky toy. To a dog it's a dying animal. It's making the sound of a dying creature. What do they want to do? They want to chew it and take, what do they do? They take the squeaky toy out because they killed it. So it went from prey to captured. Uh, uh. And then what is this? This is the dead animal. So we still hunt and gather, only now we go to the pet store for our food or, or the supermarket for our food. So we're still hunter and gatherers. Uh, again, leash and collar on. What is this to a dog? Do you think it's, it knows the concept? I don't know the concept. I just know you plug it into electric. I don't even know where electric comes from, how it gets in my house. But this is a creature, a creature that moves. So, and what does it smell like? It's all vacuumed up odor, food, dog hair. So to the dog who doesn't see that well, just smells. And then this thing starts creeping across the floor. What is this, a wheelchair? 
with metallic noises? He doesn't know. So we teach the human, we teach the dog the world. And when we can't teach the dog, we saw him out playing. He peed and pooped. His needs were met. I love physically. No treats. When I want to feed the dog, I follow Mother Nature's great ideas. Mother Nature created pack animals. I didn't. Dr. Temple Grandin didn't. Mother Nature did. So we learn how to deal with them and how they see. Learn fear from, we don't want to let them jump. Jumping is a bad behavior, right? What you, you reap what you sow. You have a little puppy now jumping. If you encourage it, oh, daddy's home, give me hugs. Four months later, he'll be knocking grandma through the storm door. Bad. And then add to the fact there's breed discrimination in the form of pit bulls, bully breeds. So we praise good behavior, four feet are on the ground. I want food, give her food. Good dog, Blue, go place, place. And then I'll give her a treat for that. Here's my human brain that we talk about. Dr. Grandin would be proud of me. Human executive brain, animal brain, mammalian brain, reptilian. I'm doing my homework, doc. Doing my homework.